everybody just thought I'd make a random weekend video just to go over some stuff uh, I wanted to go over a record trade that I had on eyes just my single best in and out trade uh, for twenty thousand dollars that was really good I want to go over a morning trade I had on it which I made around ten thousand basically eyes um, it's just been very volatile lately it's been flowing in a clean range uh, having having just nice volume and nice uh, ranges that I can take advantage of and make some money on. They've been really predictable um, as far as what I'm used to playing and kind of it's been tricky like and I'll show that in a bit it's a little tricky I've had to adjust um, in some spots but overall I mean it's just been a great ticker to keep watching every day um, so that kind of goes down to um, that comes back to if something is hot, keep watching it until it's not hot. You know, that's something I really believe in. Um, just keep it on your watch list as long as it's making really great moves that a day trader can, can capitalize on. Um, I really strongly believe that that's the way to go. And then as that volatility decreases, as it, you know, print rate goes down, um, volume decreases, it it starts to become on the back side of the move which means kind of that front side flow um, it kind of comes to an end and you, you get the situation where it begins the back side uh, which is basically it's more favorable uh, for shorts as opposed to longs and that's really when you want to stop uh, touching it if you're long biased you want to look for other stocks that are on front side moves and ignore the ones that begin their back side um, so um, what else? I'm going to talk about uh, crushing the downswing. So, you know, I got out of that that 20,000 downswing um, for whatever reasons. That's another story, but I got out of it, and um, I'm going to show the overall profit chart. So, you know, it's uh, it's kind of funny going from 792 to 772. Um, it's funny because like I was like freaking out like I just didn't know what was going on I was like really down for a bit and uh, everybody knows what the feeling is you know you go through that mental torment uh, <laughs> it's it's just part of the game and you gotta overcome it you gotta reset you gotta you know just get back to the basics use small size really try to figure out what that root cause is for your issue for the problem um, you know, immediately you want to just see or, or talk about it with yourself or your friends and just kind of what you think that root cause is and then combine that with just using that smaller size, using the basics mentality where you just go back to your basics um, that worked in the beginning, you know, that, that led to your, your upswing. You want to just go back to those basics with small size and the key is stop the bleeding. I did that pretty well, and you can see now that I'm at 872,000. Um, so essentially, I've made 100,000 uh, since the low of that downswing. I made 100,000. So very good, obviously. Nice to continue my upswing and try to hit that 900,000 mark pretty soon. That'd be that'd be nice and. Obviously, the biggest milestone is the million mark. Uh, that's going to be cool, just because you know, I like I like goals. I like having kind of long-term goals, something that you can look forward to and, and progress at. Um, it's it's fun, you know. It's just fun to have those goals and and, and those milestones. It keeps me motivated, you know, showing up each day, giving it my all. Um, and then I uh, just wanted to quickly touch on a couple things. One is um, there is more bot accounts on Twitter uh, than ever before, than I've ever seen it. I'm getting constant messages um, from fake accounts, from people, you know, successful traders in the community. Just constant barrage, just a barrage of messages. It's nonstop. Uh, look. This is an automated system. They have a script that makes constantly makes new Twitter accounts. Um, 
and it just messages thousands of people. It's a numbers game. They need to message, you know, they might message 200,000 accounts. Out of that 200,000, maybe they get message, they get respond. Um, maybe uh, 5,000 people respond. Out of that 5,000, maybe 10 people are, are actually potentially going to get scammed. You know, maybe the other amount of people are just like screwing with the bots or, or, or the people. But then there's like 10 that, that engage in the conversation to the point where maybe, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that bot script, you know, alerts maybe the, the scammers that, hey, this person's been talking with us for an unusually uh, long amount of time um, compared to the sample size, zone in on them. And then maybe the scammer comes in and takes over for the bot. Whatever the case, it, it's, it's definitely an automated system. And that's why I say like, just ignore it guys, because there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing anybody can do about it. Since the beginning of time, humans have always looked for clever ways to scam each other. <laughs> Even 500 years ago, a um, thousand years ago, it, beginning of time. I mean, nowadays, obviously with the internet, things get, the scale is much larger. They, they're using automated systems to get a large sample size and, um, yeah, you know, it, it, they wouldn't do it if it didn't work, but just be careful out there. Don't get scammed, you know, don't get scammed. Never, um, don't respond, right? Never respond to messages because successful people are not going to reach out and message you first. That's just not a thing. Never will be. Um, so don't respond, you know, just ignore them. And honestly, I would say don't bother reporting them. Honestly, at this point, there's so many I don't want you guys to focus on reporting bots and stuff like that. Focus on trading, focus on learning. We don't have time to report these things and you don't either. Just go on with your life. Just know that scammers are a part of this world. It's a part of the internet. Um, reach out to people that you think either they're new to the internet. You know, I've got like my dad, for example, he's, you know, he's getting into, into uh, trading more and, and just learning. And I'm going to have to go through and talk to him about this stuff because, you know, he's relatively new to the internet game and all the scammers and all the weird stuff that goes on. So I'll be trying to talk to him about that, you know, so just I just wanted to get that out there. Like the scammers are out of control. The bot accounts are out of control. Um, you know, I, I just I want to try to do my part, but it's overwhelming because there's just there's so many, you know, they're bots. So it's hard to battle automated systems when you're just one human. So I wanted to get that out there. And then just wanted to look at this. Uh, okay, so this comment, first of all, I mean, he says that he hates me. That's fine. You know, like, I understand I'm kind of a maybe polarizing figure. I mean, not everybody's going to love you in life. That's completely fine. Um, but he just says that he checks my trades and you scalp big like three cents on three dollars um a lot of one percent wins you really must read that level two um, for those three cent scalps uh, lol so look uh i just thought i would go through this again my profit ly uh the percentages they're they're not right um because this is it, it's a data tracking site but it's not very you know it's not very good for scalpers and I'm a scalper that might take 10 trades in a day on one stock. Now what that does, it, um, it puts all of those 10 trades together. Um, so it will add all the shares and make just a total average trade out of those 10 trades, which obviously that, that changes all the percentages that, that makes it very, very low average percentage gain when the reality is my average percentage gain is probably more like, I don't know, 8%, I would guess. Um, just because I do kind of play those higher price stocks where I'm not getting the large percentage moves, but that's a whole nother story. The point is, don't look at the trades I post on Profit LY because none of them are accurate. Um, you're not going to get a good idea of what I'm doing, just look at my Twitter posts. You know, like I'm very open, I'm very transparent on Twitter. I, I give my trades and you can you can get a better idea of the reality of, of some of these scalps. 
Um, and, and then I'll also... Alright, so let's just go through the trades on eyes, you know. Sorry about all the talking in the beginning uh, of the video, but just want to get that stuff. Uh, want to talk about stuff, so... Alright. So, the, the day I made the most money on eyes was the 18th. That was on Thursday. I just want to point this chart out real quick because obviously eyes got really hot. It went from, you know, the news dropped when it was like $1.60 and it went to 20 Really insane move. But like, look at each day. It's still flowing on a front side, um, front side move. Like, in general, it's kind of holding a trend. Had a really, really nice... So when you're looking at this flow, it flows up, comes down, holds the support, bounces back up to create the top of the range, flows down, okay? For four days, kind of flows down, but it holds gains very well. You get this day, this candle, where it like surges back up and, and kind of re-enters the horizontal range, and it holds for a full day. And so that was kind of when I thought, okay, it uh, it's going to potentially have a really nice rip out of this range and could retest the former highs. And if it retests the former highs and holds, it could have a major breakout over 20. And that reminds me of things like APVO. You know, I might as well pull it up. Again, sorry if my speech isn't the best. I did kind of just wake up. Definitely feel my voice box kind of not the best. Uh, anyways, I guess this didn't consolidate as long as eyes. Kind of just like went up for four days on a... It was just front side the whole time, like just ramping never gave any suggestion, you know, no suggestion that you should short this. It was just straight up ramping. Um, and this only shows 60, but I think on the after hours it hit like 85. I guess this was a pretty bad example because this just kept ramping. I thought it consolidated more. Eh, ignore that. Anyways, so the point is, it's a healthy trend. This is kind of like technical analysis that you would see on an intraday chart, perhaps, if you were trying to time an entry. Um, and it's just happening on a multi-day scale, right? So, or a multi-week, yeah, multi-week scale. So, um, get in a habit of pulling up the longer time frames and just taking a look, um, because you want to use the setups on the larger time frames to better, you know, you get a better kind of insight into where that chart may flow to. And that makes it a lot easier to nail the plays um, on the intraday, so the day you're playing. All right. So um, this spot I wanted to point out real quick. So if you look, this is again, just you're looking at a, in general, you're getting that trend. And the thing is, you have this spot right here. So you might see that and you might go like, oh, it's breaking down. This is, this is weak now. You know, it like, it got bullish. It tried to hold. And then it, you know, it ideally we'd be looking for a spike to continue this bullish move and continue to spike and continue to squeeze to again just retest some of these highs. But it breaks down. And so a lot of people might assume it's over. But you know what really happened here is it holds the support, okay? It holds the support very well. And then it ramps and it reclaims the range. I've seen this a lot, you know, it's something that when I was newer, I, I either didn't recognize it as often or it wasn't happening as often. 
Um, or perhaps I just wasn't experienced enough to, to realize it. Um, but, but this is a common occurrence, you know, kind of the false breakdown holds the support, reclaims the range, which is kind of when it does that, it's like, okay, it could break out now. It's like, you know, that's, that's basically what it is. I mean, I, I don't really know what else to say about it. I mean, it's kind of like a short trap, I suppose, um, because if shorts were shorting it in this area, expecting it to just, you know, have a quick pop and then a, a drop back down and then kind of fall apart if they, if they shorted it heavy here and then it starts to break down, you know, shorts might add, they might even add here. I don't know. I don't really know what type of, um, short strats are out there, but the point is when it quickly reclaims that range, maybe shorts add more in this area because they're, they're, they might feel super confident that there's no way it's going to break out of this high. It's just, it's just not going to do it. It's just going to come back down. Um, you know, they might expect something like this where it just kind of, okay, kind of perks, comes back up, but it's going to make a lower high and then just die. Right. I, I mean, I figure that's, that's what a lot of people could think. Um, again, I just, I think it's good to kind of think about other people's perspectives and, and views. Um, and other people's strategies just to kind of get into their head um, maybe get some better insight into into what they might be thinking it can help my trading um, anyways so once it does reclaim that range on this day you know overnight um, it tries to break down but in pre-market it was having a lot of trading in that key consolidation zone. So I was like, all right, it's still consolidating in this range. I can watch it. So in the morning, you know, ideally what I look for, I need to be confident in, in a play and kind of this morning uh, momentum, really nice move from 1410 to 15. Um, that to me was kind of a sign, okay, this is bullish. Um, and that's kind of the information that I use so that I can watch it confidently. And if it does set up later, you know, I'll play it because it's like this information is favors me as, as somebody who goes long. So then in this area, you know, it, it's, it was kind of difficult to play. But you can see that I use kind of this micro wedge. Okay, so I use this micro wedge, one of these, to time a precise entry, and that's, you know, that's ideal. You want to wait for some type of wedge, some type of support hold, and then time an entry. So I took my first, my first entry there, and then when it was ramping, I also took some shares here. And I was comfortable with adding here because, you know, it, it broke out of this wedge, had a big surge that I guess happened probably too fast for me to react to, I'm guessing. It held for a full minute and then I was basically just taking this ad spot on the 1480 as a continuation, a push to kind of confirm that three minute flag setup which is just a really great way to have a really precise risk and a, and a really precise entry where that you're basically entering healthy momentum. So that momentum is surging up. You're entering with the momentum so that ideally that price is going to go up, you know, higher than your entry immediately so that you can manage your trade better. That's what I did. And luckily found a really nice uptrend. And uh, yeah, I locked it up. Basically, I, uh, yeah, so this is what I did. I, I saw the momentum hit 1580. I was looking for this, okay? I, I, I needed it essentially to have a nice surge, hold for a minute, and then continue the surge over 1580, 
Ideally, it would have tested 16 right away and, and broke out over 16. That way I could have been more patient, um, but it gets rejected at 1570. It's not even able to retest 1580. To me, that was a bad sign. I decided to just get out, um, lock in my profits. So I got out, uh, got filled, my 10,000 share sell, got filled at 1552 average. So that's a really nice win. You know, I got right here, locked up close to 10,000, I believe, maybe like 9,500 or something. So that's a very good trade, you know, just a nice morning trade, locking up those profits. And I wanted to, essentially, I just wanted to reevaluate it, see if it could form some very clean, precise structures that I could get involved in again. Um, but once this, this, obviously, this candle, you know, somebody just, basically, they just market sold, you know, 180,000 shares. Or, you know, maybe they sold 150,000 and the other 40,000 was, was stop losses. I, I don't know, but... Uh, either way, 15.30 to 14.30, that's a dollar share dump, just instantly. So this kind of, you know, this is a nice example of why you have to know what price zones are safe to enter in, and then we got to know when it gets risky. Um, and this also has to do with the long-term chart. You know, I know I'm not playing like the the fresh the, the the first amazing breakout right like i'm not playing the first one this is more like a bounce on multi-week so when you're playing a bounce play those are going to be riskier you're going to have to lock in profits faster and there's going to be a lot more traps when you're playing specifically bounce plays So yeah, I mean, I'm very picky with bounce plays. If I feel weakness, I get out, I reevaluate. If something happens, it basically tells me, okay, it's going to need more time um, or just stay away for a bit. You know, I'll stay away. Now in this area, like I took eyes multiple times on this day. I believe I took a small win here. Yeah, I took 5,000 shares at 1540 and I sold it. Um, I got a really good fill at 1549, which was fortunate. So I made $450 on this, what I would con you know consider a failed play. So you enter this wedge, you would expect it to start exploding, retesting this morning high and breaking out. But it doesn't for five minutes. It just sits there as like a, a push, right? Push over that 1550 key resistance. That was great. What wasn't great was when it broke out and then somebody immediately put 50,000 shares um, on the ask at 1550. And as soon as I saw that, I sold it immediately. Because I knew it's just like it's a, it's a, it's going to be a false breakout and stuff because it's just a huge sell order. You know, there's not much I can do there. I just got to get out and reevaluate. There's another spot. And like, look, I I know I'm again like this video is what 23 minutes long now, 24. I know I'm talking a lot about maybe random stuff or rambling more than I should, but, and I know, again, I'm kind of tired, my speech is choppy and um, maybe not fluent or, or pleasant to listen to, but um, I'm just kind of trying to relax this weekend, kind of speak my mind and just, you know, just go over go over some of the stuff, maybe some people will get some stuff out of it. You know, it's always just a, it's not like I'm doing it, f um, it. What I'm saying is it also helps me. So it is kind of really good to reflect. And um, I definitely get value out of it too. So go, it definitely is beneficial for both parties, for sure. All right, so I took 5,000 and 1550 right here. I was expecting this this curl out of this micro wedge 
didn't just basically start exploding and breaking out. Did I take it there? Man, where did I take it? Sorry, I didn't take it at 1550. I took it at 1543. Right. I took it in here, okay? 1543. And... In anticipation it was going to curl okay it gets to 1556 it's looking real good but for three or four full minutes it doesn't do anything and when you're looking at when you're trying to time squeezes a lot of times they work right away so when this one didn't work for you know I was in it for like four minutes at this point and what happened in the morning Right? Instant drop, $1 a share. So I knew, like, uh, I'm playing with fire here, and if it doesn't go up right away, what's going to happen? People are going to get nervous. When they get nervous, they're going to sell. It could have another dump, essentially. And, you know, so I kind of, in this spot, I ignored price. You know, sometimes you just got to ignore price and sell it uh, based on time. So it, it just was taking too long. I decided to cut it and just protect myself. So I, I think I got filled at 1538. So I lost $200 on this trade and it dumped to 1516 or 1515. So look, some spots you just want to get out to protect yourself and it's like, if I sell it and it, it holds and then just instantly spikes right away, then so be it. I, I guess, you know, I'm, I guess I'll miss it. Or maybe if it starts to spike right away, I can re-enter, but maybe 2,000 shares instead of five. And, and in this spot, I really was only comfortable with taking 5,000 shares because it just didn't have enough. I just didn't feel confident enough in the spot, and I knew it could be trappy like the morning. So I only took 5,000 shares there. <laughs> what was I even trying to explain? Essentially, if you know that something is going to dip, it's better to cut it right away because if it starts to dip, I mean, what are you going to do? If you cut it, you know, if I cut it here, I would lose $1,000 more than if I just cut it right away here. And if you don't cut it here, then you're at risk of possibly getting a dollar share dump and losing 5000 Why open yourself up to that much risk? If you know it's coming, get out, right? I mean, that's my philosophy. It's always been protect myself first. Think about profit second. Um, okay, so finally to the biggest trade of my career. I know, it's like, sometimes, you know, there's too much to show on Twitter, and um, the point is, there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes than just the trade. Um, there's a big, bigger story, and I kind of wanted to show the bigger story. You know, how I, I analyzed it and played it all day. You know, I took a small win in this area, trying to time a surge, didn't get it. Okay, I'll wait and reevaluate later. No problem. Took a small loss here. Okay, I'll reevaluate. No problem. Like, you know, I get the question a lot. Like, how did you know to buy exactly here and not here? A lot of times it's like I'm either just not watching it because I felt like it needed more time and I was focusing on stocks that I felt like had better potential. Or a lot of times I do take a small win or a small loss in that area. Um, it's not that I'm not, you know, how do I explain it? I mean, I take shots at stuff all the time. That's kind of what my strategy is all about. Go for those spots that I feel like can really explode. And if they don't, the risk is so low because I am taking, you know, I have a very, very quick and tight cut strategy. So my win rate is not great. But my risk reward is insane, you know, and probably the risk, the, one of the best risk rewards that you can achieve in trading um, because I, I do have a strategy that's such a tight, or um, sorry, such a precise entry with a precise risk that can really lead to some explosive moves. 
All right, so this is what I wanted to quickly uh, touch on. And, and the reason earlier in the video I brought up that multi-day where it was holding a trend and then it broke down. So look at, this is the same thing. It's just happening on um, a 30 minute scale instead of a multi-day scale. So you do get that breakdown. Right? Like it looks like shorts are going to win, they're going to get the big crack, it's going to die, but it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't break down, and then it reclaims the range without any issues. That was the biggest moment where I was like, oh, okay, you know, like it's time, it's time to focus on this, and that to me was like, it's just really, really good, uh, really good indicator. So I think this is how I played it. Um, I took 5,000 shares at 1555 or 1553. Um, it did pull back, you know, to the 1540, but I was extremely confident now um because again it's just like you get when when something happens and it, it should have died here it should have had that big massive crack just like it happened in the morning should have happened here and when it doesn't and it reclaims the range and starts to curl up that's like that's really bullish so when i take 5,000 shares it's like yeah i am willing to risk this range you know i'm, I'm willing to risk you know, realistically, probably 1537 was going to be my risk. If it broke 1540, yeah, I, pro I probably would have dumped it. And that's just the risk I was willing to take, you know. It didn't, you know, it didn't break that support. It held 1541 and consolidated. And it consolidated into a really, really clean, precise triangle setup. Um, and... I chipped away, you know, that, that resistance level was pretty strong, pretty strong at 1555. I chipped away a little bit at it. The market chipped away at it a bit. Holds a perfect triangle setup. And then that surge, you know, starts to surge and retest at 1555. So I have some, some different thoughts on this. First of all, um, because it held perfectly and, and is testing Again, it's testing, and you have all these additional factors on the multi-week, and even on this micro um, time frame, you have all these factors: the, the false breakdown recovery, the the fact that it held gains all afternoon now, the fact that it's so close to a to a high of day test, um, right? All these factors. There, there's so many good factors that support my thesis. So I take 5,000 more shares and basically take my max size. You know, it's just like, I'm not willing to take any more than 10,000 shares uh, of a stock like this. It's a crazy share size, right? Like I'm in $150,000 worth of this stock. It's, you know, it was the biggest um, position of my career. And the reason why I pushed that size Look, I was having a good week. You know, I was having a good day. You know, I was, I, it's easy to size into plays that you nail in the, let's see, in the morning, for example, I nailed eyes for $10,000. I can push it because this stock is, generally speaking, it is doing what I expect it to do. It has a good range. It has a good flow. It's held its gains all day. And I've got $10,000 of profit on this stock. If this trade doesn't work out and 1555 gets rejected and it doesn't break out here and it starts to get weak, I'm going to try to cut at 1550. Okay. If I don't get filled all at 1550 or maybe an insta dump happens and I get filled at 1540 or worst case, yes. 15.30 perhaps. Yeah, I was willing to risk uh, risk between $500 and $2,500 on this trade. And I was willing to risk that because I was already up $10,000 from the morning. If I don't nail this in the morning, I'd probably take 
two to five thousand shares here and I don't add. I a, a lot of my strategy is pushing things when it's working, pushing things when I'm sharp, pushing things when my PL is nice and green. I have a weird, weird take on, on trading with PL. I think trading with unrealized PL is really bad. I've never done it, I never will. But trading with realized PL, I think, is very beneficial because I use that information to gauge if I should push things or pull back. And I basically use my PL as a guide as to how sharp I am or if I'm really feeling the flow of the day and connecting with it, I'll be really heavy green and I can continue to push size. And when you're confident and, and, and sharp, those are the times when you're going to have the most, you know, the likelihood to succeed the most. So what better time to push yourself when you're the sharpest? And that's why I trade with my, my profits showing uh, to use it as a guide. All right, so I get the breakout, obviously, you know, start searching. And this is, now I'm in 10,000 shares, 1554 average. And this is where the, the long-term chart comes in. So I know it's breaking out now. Um, it's breaking out. So this is where I entered, essentially, used a really nice intraday uh, TA setup to get a precise entry so I could have some relatively precise risk and it was anticipating that it was going to surge up, test this former 1601 high. And if it breaks out of that 1601 high, you could get a nice surge up and potentially start testing some of these highs for a major, major breakout. Then maybe it wouldn't happen all on this day, but maybe it would surge up, maybe hold for you no know, one or two days and then find new highs. But um, all of my insight was based purely on this multi-day. So again, just be aware of what's happening on the multi-day timeframes so that you can have the insight to know kind of where is an appropriate spot to hold it for. My original profit target was 1850. Um, you know, when you get a multi-day setup that's that good, it's like, I'm not gonna sell it on the first flow. I'm up a lot of money, that's great, but if I sell it, I'm not going to be able to really get an accurate re-entry, and it's hard to know where it's going to surge to before it pulls back, and it's like, look, it's going to have a first flow, and it's going to have a pullback. I think, statistically, I think it's more probable it's going to hold a dip and then find a new surge up, so I was just going to hold it and just say, okay, I'll hold it, it is what it is, if I lose some profits back, it just kind of is one of those situations. I'm either going to look smart or I'm going to look stupid, right? It's just one of those situations. You got to go with your plan. My plan was 1850. I'm not going to sell it at 17. It's not going to happen. Um, it does pull back into like a micro kind of consolidation and then it starts to surge and some more momentum comes in. You get that additional push and you get that breakout to new highs. In this area, it was looking quite good. It was flowing pretty nicely. Um, it consolidated for about you know five minutes here, and it forms a micro flag setup, roughly speaking. You know, this is very high high volatility. The the it's sloppy, right? It's sloppy. So look, the the idea here though is the scale of this kind of surge was 1680 to 1780. If it consolidates in this area and forms kind of this micro triangle, when it starts to curl out of the micro triangle, that momentum should continue scale. So this should continue to surge from 1780 into the 18 push. I mean, at minimum, it should have an $18 breakout. When it doesn't have an $18 breakout right here, where I felt that momentum surge uh, should have occurred, that was a red flag to me. Um, and essentially, it, I, I knew I had to get out because I was going to be risking all of my profits if I didn't lock in profits here. So I sold it to 1757 and locked up $20,000 play. Um, and, and 
I believe, okay, so I think I messed around with a re-entry. Yeah, I took a 5,000 share re-entry. Wouldn't really recommend this to anybody, but took like this dip. Wanted to get like a push, didn't get it. Ended up selling it for, for a very small win. Just something that's not even worth talking about essentially. But I, I was willing to play it again. I mean, if it, it was able to hold in this range and form a tight setup and maybe start pushing again, I probably would have played it again, but I just like, it just really didn't feel strong enough. Um, and it just didn't give me the confidence required to re-enter it. And then once it starts breaking down, this is like a dream for shorts. I mean, for, for somebody who's good at shorting, this is a dream. It's confirmation that this is this is time to enter. If it, if it pushed to the upside, this would be my re-entry. So if, if I was watching it very closely in here, if it started to push, I would have absolutely took, taken the re-entry. Maybe half size, right? So 5,000 shares instead of 10,000. And ideally, I would have gotten a nice push to test 18 and get an $18 breakout. Would have been a great play. But, you know, react to what the facts are. The facts are it doesn't break to the upside, it goes to the downside. Great short. Just absolutely great short. Um, this is kind of why I might, you know, I might open a speed trader account or, or some sort of account that I can get better, better uh, short entries because I think it would be beneficial to, to shift my bias from, from long and go short because uh, that's just a great play. It's a great play. So... Again, and then it's like on the multi-day. What really happened is basically it formed a lower high on a bounce setup. So the beginning of the bounce was in this range, like this 1050 area. That was the beginning of the bounce. It surges up. It has a pullback. The pullback holds and then it surges up to new highs. But this is really just a continuation of this bounce. Again, you got to be more conservative on bounce plays. So that's why I came right back down because it, it failed to basically it failed to have momentum to test the former high. And if it tests the former high, that's going to get a lot more interest. That's going to get a lot more shorts to squeeze out rather than if it gets a confirmation stuff move that we saw on that entry day TA, it confirmed it was a good short, it confirmed that momentum was done and it was going to come down. Essentially, the price did not go high enough. So when it stuffs and goes back down with this lower high on, on the multi-week, it basically means the major squeeze is failing and that's why it came all the way back down. It is, however, still holding overall micro range on the multi-week. So, I mean, if it does consolidate in this area into next week, it is possible it could start to curl again in this area and then maybe get that bigger move that, that I'm looking for. It could also just fizzle out and be completely done. I'll react to the facts, you know, of what happens, what, what TA shows up what information presents itself, I'll react to that accordingly. And that's all we can really do as traders. Look at what plays out and then look at those intraday setups to time precise entries with precise uh, risk management, because that's what trading is all about. It's just about managing your risk and uh, trying to find some good reward, right? Okay, uh, 44 minute video. I think that's gonna be that's gonna do it for this video. I've talked about enough stuff, so yeah. So that was a good week. Made like made almost seventy thousand that week. Pretty crazy. 
Just glad that that downswing is behind me. I'm in a better place mentally. Um, I figured things out and I'm adjusting to kind of the new flow, the new hot trends, the new flows. I'm using the same strategy, the same TA strategy to time entries and have precise risk. But you got to understand the time frames are always adjusting. Flows are always adjusting and, and the trend of, of so what I mean by that is like on average, maybe when the market was hotter in the beginning of the year, the continuations would occur maybe 11 or 12, right? In the morning, they would just occur right away. They would continue right away. It wouldn't really be choppy. It wouldn't really make you guess. It would just keep working. Now they're chopping. They're having really harsh pullbacks to original entry zones. They're making your life hard in the morning and in this kind of afternoon chop but they are working right they're still working you just need to chill out more so instead of being in a rush to get involved in this uh 10 you know 11 a.m zone right instead of being in a big rush to get involved in here because it used to work great but now you're just getting destroyed so adjust give the plays more time as long as they show that they need more time, give them more time. And then once they develop later, nail them. Like you would have normally nailed them uh, in the plays, like in the flows that worked in the beginning of the year. So it's just about adjusting. And then if this flow changes and plays start to have explosive moves right after the big initial move, if that trend ever comes back, I'll adjust and start getting involved earlier again. Same strategy, but uh, yeah, you get you get the point. I'm rambling at this point. Still gotta wake up. All right. Thanks for watching the video. See ya.